All right, hello and welcome everybody uh, to our pantry makeover class series. Um, hope everybody is staying really warm. I know it is super cold outside. It snowed here a couple days ago, but today's recipe is absolutely perfect for the snowy weather. So, uh, so we'll get to that in a uh, few minutes, but I appreciate everybody joining me here for another pantry makeover class in our series. My name is Charlotte Scheid. I'm one of the Giant Company Dietitians. Um, and again, we have a great recipe for today. Um, I just want to mention one thing um, for those of you who are new for the month of January. So we have a virtual pantry makeover sweepstakes, which is super exciting. It's the beginning of the new year and it's a perfect time to refresh our pantry, um, even my pantry and everybody's pantry. Um, so if you do um, attend any of our virtual well-being classes and then provide your loyalty card number in January, you will be automatically entered into a random drawing uh, to win one of three virtual pantry makeover uh, pantry makeovers conducted by one of us, one of the dietitians, um, and the value is $100 each. But if you want more uh, details about that sweepstakes, you can visit uh, visit the um, our Eventbrite, Eventbrite page and we will give you some more details for that sweepstakes. So definitely check that out. All right, so today's class, uh, when we're talking about pantries, is uh, we're going to be focusing all on spices. So I could have done spices and herbs, but I just wanted to focus today on spices. Um, but I want everybody to answer this question, of course, if you want to, but what is your favorite spice? And I will say, you put your answer in the chat, I will say my favorite spice is probably cinnamon because I, I really use it in a lot of different things, whether that be uh, meals, drinks, and even coffee. You can always put it in coffee and always uh, taste really good. So you can put your answer in the chat. What is your favorite spice? I would love to know what everybody has to say. Okay, so a lot of you are saying cinnamon, garlic, turmeric, that's a really good one. And saffron, paprika. It looks like a lot of, lot of paprika and garlics and turmeric. Oh, and ginger is a good one too. I have to say ginger is another one of my, one of my favorite ones. I love it in a stir fry and chili powder. So we're using chili powder today. So it looks like a lot of you love spices, oh, which is really great and we'll, talk a little bit more in this class about even the health benefits of it and a great way to flavor different meals. All right, so thanks everybody for answering that question. Okay, so let's review again. Um, so two weeks ago, I had a pantry class and I already talked a little bit about why I refreshed your pantry and I'll just go over it again. Um, but probably, probably a lot of you already know this anyways, but um, a pantry refresh can contribute to healthier eating, uh, providing a clear understanding of the available ingredients, and then enabling more mindful and nutritious food choices. Especially when you organize your pantry and just know what's there, it's just easier to create meal ideas, just knowing what you have on hand and not being, and I'm guilty of this too, just being so overwhelmed, you know, not knowing what ingredients that you have. Um, and then it just, kind of a snowball effect from there. So it's always a good idea to know what's in your pantry and to help it to be organized. So when we focus a little bit more on dried spices, and I wanted to show everybody too, I don't know if you can see this in my screen, um, but this is my uh, pantry spice area. And I will say probably a year ago, this looked like kind of a unorganized, <laughs> unorganized disaster, but I will credit my husband for this. He actually got these little containers or um, organization trays um, but these are all of my, hopefully you can see this, my pantry pantry spices. So I just have them right here. I can pull them out. I can easily see, you know, easily see what's on hand. So hopefully everybody's able to see that at least, at least a little bit. But, um, but that's always really nice. I just wanted to share that. I don't know what everybody else is. Actually, all my spices used to be in my um, roundabout, but wanted to keep it there just because it's easy to, easy to pull them out. Um, so just wanted to share that. But open dried spices, so something to keep in mind, um, and I probably should go through mine too, but open dried spices should be replaced about every six months or so. So if you have ones that are, you know, two or three years old, um, definitely change them out for some fresh ones, mostly because the flavor is not going to be very good, the texture is not going to be very good. And when we think about spices, we want them to, you know, flavor our meals, have our meals be, um, you know, taste really good. So um, open dried spices should be replaced every six months. So the date listed or the expiration date on it um, is how long the spice will be at its best quality if unopened. So once we do open it and expose it to the air, it's going to deteriorate. So the flavor, the texture, and the color will deteriorate once it's exposed to air. 
um, store-bought spices. As you can see, I have some store-bought spices right here. And um, we want to store them in their container for best quality and of course store in a cool, dry place. So this is really like the perfect area for my uh, spices or, or a roundabout or in any other kind of cabinet. So we wanna store them in a cool, dry place. Uh, bulk spices, if you do buy them, like large quantities, definitely make sure that they're stored in airtight containers and not just, you know, exposed to the air all the time. Something to keep in mind. But definitely think about when we think about the expiration date or the date listed, that's if, um, you know, it, it is unopened. So another idea too, if you, um, you know, if you are opening up your spices, you can just put a little sticker on it of the date of when you opened it. And that's an easy way to see if it's been six months or so. So Definitely every six months, six months, try to refresh our spices. So focus, a focus on spices. So really what are spices? So um, probably a lot of you already know this, but spices come from the roots, bark, buds, seeds, or berry of plants and trees. And we think of herbs, they come from uh, the leaves. So why should we use spices? I mentioned this a little bit earlier. So they're a way to flavor meals without, without um, adding a lot of that extra sodium, fat, or sugar, especially if you're trying to decrease that. In your diet, uh, spices are the perfect way to, uh, to flavor your meals and have them taste really good. They provide color. So if you want something that's a meal that's more colorful or if you're having people over um, and you want those different colors. Uh, turmeric, so I've been actually cooking with turmeric um, for, for a little while now, but that really provides a great golden yellow color. Or if you're uh, cooking with paprika, it gives a really great reddish orange color. So if color is something of importance to you, it, uh, spices are a great way to have color into your meals. And a little bit goes a long way, which is, um, which is you know, something to think about too, when it comes to flavor and color and even the health benefits. So of course you don't need, you know, half of this container to, for all these benefits. And um, another, another important thing to keep in mind is add spices or try to add spices in the beginning. Um, of course, these are for hot dishes. So add them in the beginning of cooking. So there's adequate time for flavors to release. If you are adding spices to more of a cold dish, definitely put it in the refrigerator or just let it kind of marinate or let the flavors um, have enough time to be released. So that's something to keep in mind too for spices. All right, so let's go over a little bit about the health benefits of spices and probably a lot, or a lot of you have already, um, have seen a lot of the health benefits, but just a review. So most spices are really rich in antioxidants. So of course we know antioxidants help to support the body's ability to fight infection, um, uh, reduces the risk for cancers and then chronic disease as well. And that's pretty much over, you know, a lot of, a lot of the different spices. So we always wanna incorporate a variety. Um, we know that certain ones reduce inflammation, which can lead to disease. So these are things like turmeric and ginger, cinnamon, cloves, and paprika. Um, we know that ginger helps to improve digestion or tummy upset. Um, for those who are pregnant, helps with nausea, or if you, um, you know, go into chemotherapy and you have nausea, uh, ginger always helps with that. There's a lot of research right now with spices and brain, or and the brain, and dysfunction and mood and memory. Um, what's been shown is that sage, coriander, and rosemary help with brain function, and especially with memory as well, related to Alzheimer's. Helps to improve heart health, certain spices, so garlic and cinnamon, cardamom, and cayenne pepper have been shown to really help with heart health. And then cinnamon, which there's been a lot of research on this, um, helps to kind of control blood sugar and the blood sugar spikes and dips. And then garlic is really good helping to support immunity, which of course is really important this time of year with all the germs going around. So definitely trying to incorporate garlic into a variety of different dishes is always um, a great idea. So just wanted to review some of the health benefits of spices. Of course, this is just a few of the many different benefits. Um, so I just listed a couple spices here, but um, a lot of different, a lot of different reasons to incorporate them into your diet. So these are just some pantry spices that you can find in store. Um, obviously in the spice section, but we have cumin here, garlic powder, um, and let's see, nutmeg and cinnamon, chili powder. So, so if you haven't seen or been in this aisle before, which I'm sure a lot of you have, um, that's what, that's what they look like. And the spices that we're going to be using today in our recipe, um, cumin, chili powder, garlic powder, and then, um, we're also going to be using oregano, even though that's not, um, it's more of an herb, but. So those are the different spices we'll be using. So if you haven't uh, looked at the, or been in like the cooking aisle, the 
Spice Eye, I'll definitely check it out. So there's a couple of different ways to use spices. There are so many different ways to use spices, but I just wanted to list some here of how I use them. So first, I love a good bean salad. And usually with bean salads, uh, cumin and garlic are great spices to add to them. With bean salads, there are just so many, so many different ways to make a bean salad and a lot of different spices. But when I make one, I like to use cumin and garlic, um, especially for the cold, um, the cold bean salads. Of course, this time of year is a great, great time of the year for soups and stews. So chili powder, black pepper, turmeric, sage are all Great ideas if you are making a super stew. It gives it really good flavor, um, especially if you're using beans or any type of vegetable. Those flavors with just adding a little bit of salt and pepper really helps the flavors um, to pop. A stir fry, I don't know if anybody makes a good stir fry, but I absolutely love a stir fry with ginger. And you can put your answer in the chat. Does anybody else love or make stir fry? Or, or use ginger in it. Um, I love a good stir fry with like ginger and shrimp and what else do I use? Just a whole variety of different vegetables and broccoli. I love, love definitely love ginger and a stir fry. But you can also use cumin and coriander um, and carda, cardamom as well. If you are making oatmeal or yogurt parfaits, even baked goods, uh, these are a couple of spices as well. So ginger, cloves, allspice, and cinnamon. So a lot of times when I think of cloves and allspice, I think of obviously the holiday season, but you can, of course, use that, um, use that throughout the year. The other thing I like to make too, or incorporate spices in, is smoothies. I don't know if anybody is a smoothie drinker, but I have a recipe for a really good pumpkin pie smoothie, which has pumpkin pie spice in it. I don't know if anybody uses pumpkin pie spice, but that's a great one to add to smoothies and as well as cinnamon as well. I think cinnamon you can obviously use in a lot of different dishes, but especially with smoothies. And then also incorporating them into snacks. Um, I have been recently making baked oranges, which you just put a little bit of, I believe you just make a glaze, it's like a maple syrup, you put cinnamon on it, and you just bake it in the oven, but baked oranges and apples make for a great snack. And you of course incorporate them into different types of snacks as well. So a lot of different ways to incorporate spices into different meal snacks and into your daily routine. So that's just giving just a couple ideas, but there's many more, um, many more ideas to use spices if you're trying to incorporate them and are not doing so already. So, so I want to mention, um, so Penn State Extension, I don't know if anybody has been on their website before, but they have an absolute, absolutely great chart um, for spice and herb pairings, um, especially if you're trying to think of different recipes um, and what pairs with what. And I can send out the link too in my follow up email, but they have an absolutely great chart um, for spice and herb pairings. But I just wanted to list, list some of the ones uh, just to get an idea of maybe what pairs well with certain types of spices. So for instance, so cumin, so things like apples, beans, beef, chickpeas, couscous, we'll be using couscous in today's recipe as well as cumin. A uh, squash and tomatoes, a uh, nutmeg. So sometimes when I think of nutmeg, and I'm sure you too, I don't always think of using it with cabbage or carrots, um, onion, potato, uh, spinach, sweet potato, well, maybe sweet potato, but not so much of like the spinach, onion, and carrot, but nutmeg is a really good pairing with those. Um, cloves, and again, with cloves, I wouldn't really think to pair it with beets or red cabbage, ham, pork, pumpkin. Um, and then sage is a good one. So beans, pasta, soup, stews, stuffing. I, of course, think of sage uh, with stuffing um, and also tomatoes as well. And then turmeric. So if you, you put your answer in the chat too, if anybody uses turmeric or not. So I've been using turmeric for probably the past year. I've really gotten into it. And I especially um, love turmeric with a tofu scramble which I'll be showing a recipe for a tofu scramble that uses cumin, but I also use it for use it for a tofu scramble so it makes kind of the eggs look um not the it makes the tofu look yellow like eggs uh, but turmeric pairs really well with eggplant eggs fish lentils root vegetables spinach tofu so so just, these are just a couple ideas of different pairings with spices but again the penn state extension has an absolutely great spice and herb pairing for different foods if, if you're not too sure of what kind of foods to pair the spices with and I can send that out too in a follow-up email. But but again, just giving some ideas of what um, you know, what pairs, what pairs well with what. 
Okay, so these are some meal ideas with spices. Of course, there's so many different types of recipe with spices, but I just wanted to call out, call out just a few. And for those of you who are new, um, some of the recipes are actually, let me go back. So our Guiding Star program, um, so on different recipes and products, or our products in store and their recipes on our Savory Online Recipe Database, um, they have Guiding Stars on it. So what that means is that the more stars that something has, the more nutritionally beneficial it is. So the more stars means more vitamins, minerals, fiber, whole grains, and then less of saturated fat, added sugar, um, added sodium and those types of things. So, so on a recipe database and then in store with products, you can look for the guiding stars, but a few of these recipes do have guiding stars on them. Um, so if you're not familiar with it, that's just a little bit of background on that. So this is a spice lentil soup. Don't know if anybody likes lentils. I'm definitely a big, uh, legume kind of bean fan, especially when it comes to soups and stews, but not too hard or not too many ingredients. So we have our carrots, yellow onion, garlic, ginger, and you can, you don't have to use fresh ginger. You can always use a uh, ground ginger, uh, coriander and cardamom. And I think those spices are not as, not as popular as maybe obviously like chili powder and garlic, but, but those definitely provide great flavor. Um, some lentils, diced tomatoes and baby spinach as well. And for this one has a good amount of fiber. So 11 grams of fiber, um, well, which will help you feel fuller longer. So, so just giving everybody an idea of a soup. Um, and again, coriander and cardamom are, are our spices on in that recipe. And then it gets three guiding stars. So definitely a lot of nutritional benefit to that recipe. Next, this the I talked a little bit about tofu scramble. And I've made this recipe before and it's absolutely delicious and definitely not hard at all uh, to do. So this has our spice cumin in it but it's just extra firm tofu and not in the, so I, I mentioned the, um, the turmeric gives a really good yellow color. The cumin also gives somewhat of kind of like a yellowish, yellowish color as well. You can kind of see it in the picture. Um, but cumin is our spice for this recipe. So some tofu, um, tomato cilantro for on top and some black beans, spinach, avocados, uh, um, yeah, cheddar cheese for on top and salsa as well. So this recipe gets Two guiding stars has a good amount of fiber um, and and protein as well, but but this recipe is definitely not not too hard for making. It's two guiding stars and it's really absolutely delicious and great for breakfast or even if you want kind of a breakfast thing for dinner time, you can really eat it uh, whenever. And then I also want to mention the spice rub salmon. So this is incorporating a lot of different spices into it. So black peppercorn, sweet paprika. Cinnamon, um, so cinnamon actually really pairs well with um, with different types of fish, but especially salmon. And then cloves and cumin seeds, some canola oil, and then of course our salmon, um, and then lemon as well. So a lot of different great flavors going on in this recipe with our spice rub salmon. And again, with salmon, getting a lot of that really healthy, hard, healthy uh, fats. But, but if you're kind of bored with salmon and looking for something different, especially when it comes to flavors, this is a really good combination if you kind of want to, you know, jazz it up a little bit with, uh, with the salmon. All right, so we will get to our featured recipe. And so this recipe is called... Um, so this recipe is called Clean Up the Pantry Vegetarian Chili, and it really is, all the ingredients are really from the pantry, except maybe what we put on top, which is um, some sour cream, or you can put on Greek yogurt or avocado, but so these you can see, and actually, let me go review the recipe, and I'll show you the ingredients I have here, but this is literally pretty much, yeah, definitely a Clean Up the Pantry Vegetarian Chili, and super easy to make as well. So you can see here, so this recipe gets two guiding stars. It literally takes maybe less than 10 minutes to do what you will see right here. And I wanna mention before I do this recipe that I did already rinse and drain um, all of my beans, which, so this recipe says it takes, the prep time is about 10 minutes and probably with the draining of the beans and everything, it will uh, take 10 minutes. But, but once I make this recipe, you will see it'll probably take me, you know, at least five minutes or so or less because um, I've already drained and rinsed. But, for this recipe is a um, can of black beans. We have our can of um, kidney beans, pinto beans, and then diced tomatoes. Um, so the diced tomatoes, um, so in store we have different flavors with diced tomatoes. So the ones that I'm using today are um, with garlic and onion, just because I wanted to bring more of that flavor out. 
Um, but I, what I will mention with our diced tomatoes, we have a variety of different flavors that you can use depending on what you want to do. So there's a garlic and onion, there's a basil, garlic, and oregano, there's an onion, celery, and green pepper, um, there's one with jalapeno, and then there's um, a chili ready one. And I could have used the chili ready one. I think it just has a little bit more of a kick to it. But but today I just wanted to use the um, the garlic and onion one. But again, in store with our brand, we have a variety of different diced tomatoes if you want to kind of you know make it a little bit different. So we have diced tomatoes. We have our cream style corn. And then our uh, spices, chili powder. We're going to be adding some oregano and then other spices, cumin and garlic powder. We're also going to be incorporating some raw couscous as well as, and I was thinking before, this recipe would also be pretty good if you wanted to substitute couscous maybe for some rice or quinoa. So quinoa would help you get, get even more uh, protein if you wanted that. So then we're just going to add some uh, water. And then, of course, uh, once this is done, you can always add some sour cream or Greek yogurt, avocado, cheese, whatever that, whatever that you would like. Um, but again, literally, these are definitely just everything out of the pantry putting into a pot and letting it simmer uh, for about 30 minutes or so, mostly to let everything heat up and then to allow the couscous to cook. Um, and I think the couscous do really allow or gives just like a nice touch um, versus just adding, you know, the spices and beans. It's just nice to have something different. And I don't know if anybody has used couscous before, but um, it's just kind of a pearl uh, shaped pasta. All right, so we will go ahead. Let me stop sharing my screen and I will get started. All right, so before I, before I get started, if you can put your answer in the chat, can everybody see my two screens that I have up here? Well, when somebody asked if that is, is really, is really couscous, and it is. I just want to answer that question. Okay, everybody can see my two screens. Okay, perfect. Okay, so basically the first thing I'm going to do, so again, this recipe calls for two cans of diced tomatoes. Uh, so again, I'm using our brand diced tomato with garlic and onion. So I did already. I just want to be careful with the top of the can. So I'm just going to put this into my pot over here. So I'll put in two cans. And you can on your stove top if you want to already kind of heat it up a while. But sometimes when I do that, it tends to just kind of burn. So I'm just going to put all my ingredients in and then I'll uh, turn up the heat. So the other thing I'm going to add in is two cups of our water. This will help our couscous to um, to cook. If you just put the couscous in with uh, without the water, it's just going to get so thick and it won't be good. So I'm going to add in two cups of water. And then I'm going to add in our uh, beans. So I have kidney beans and black beans. You can see here, I have my Nature's Promise Star kidney beans. And I have my um, black beans, Nature's Promise black beans. And so these cans, um, so this is a low sodium black bean, but again, if you don't want the Nature's Promise, if you just want the regular black bean, if you drain and rinse the beans, if you're concerned about sodium, that takes away about 40% of the sodium. So that's perfectly uh, fine to do as well. So the next thing I'm going to add is our um, pinto beans and then cream style sweet corn. I don't know if anybody has added that into chili, but always a good addition as well. So go ahead and add that. So add in our pinto beans. So a lot of good protein and fiber going on with all these beans. Then add in our cream um, style sweet corn. Actually, I'm going to turn off the heat a while. Let's see. And turn that up. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is add our spices. So you can see here. So I'll start with our cumin. Um, so cumin, we're going to add one teaspoon. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll set this to the side. Then we're going to do our garlic powder. We're going to do a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm 
All right, so our chili powder, making sure I have this right. Actually, let me put in my oregano. I'm gonna do one teaspoon of oregano and I just have our nature's promise oregano. Add one teaspoon. I'm just to make sure I get the chili powder right. So chili powder, we're gonna do two tablespoons. I just have our brand uh, chili powder. One. And then two. All right, so let me just make sure I have all the ingredients in. Oh, and the couscous as well. So again, I have just our really couscous right here, and we're just going to put in a half of a cup. And again, I think like this just gives it a really nice, just extra texture, or just something different, um, different with chili. Half of a cup. All right, so I think that is all of our ingredients. Just let me double check. All right, so let me go ahead and get this a good stir. A lot of good ingredients going on here. It smells really good too. So really once that heats up, you bring it to a boil and you just let it simmer. You're gonna let it simmer for about 25 or 30 minutes, really until everything blends and then that couscous is cooked. So definitely this is a recipe that is completely out of the pantry and super easy, great for cold weather, especially if you like chili. Um, all right, so I hope that gives everybody a, a recipe idea, um, especially if you are, you know, thinking about refreshing your pantry.